Hey everyone, Charlie here, and we made it. This is the final LTP Masterclass episode on this series of Chopin Etudes, Opus 25. Um, thanks for following along, for those of you who've been following along in the past. Um, if you haven't, check them out. Um, we've got 11 videos prior to this on the first 11 Opus 25 etudes. This one's the last one, this is the Ocean Etude, number 12. This is actually one of the first etudes I ever learned. One and 12 were the first ones I learned, I think. Um, this is a cool piece. It reminds me of an old movie called The Perfect Storm, which is like a story about a boat on the ocean in a terrible storm. Um, sound, you don't want to be on the ocean when the ocean is like this etude. Um, before we start, though, uh, comment down below. Have you played this? Are you going to learn it? Does your teacher want you to learn it? Do you want to learn it? Have you played it? You know, let me know. Also, favorite, like, subscribe, and all that stuff on all the social media things for the algorithms. Appreciate that. Um, this is an LTP masterclass episode. So a normal masterclass is when I teach a student in front of an audience on a stage, and then, yeah. There's no student here, it's just me playing. So these LTP masterclasses online on my YouTube channel are basically kind of an in-depth lesson for people who are studying these pieces or who might want to study them. Uh, people who might not get a chance to, to play for me in a real master class. Um, hopefully this, this can give you some pointers and tips and advice. And, and, and again, uh, a lot of these things are, you know, my opinions. A lot of music stuff in general, interpretations are up for debate. And, you know, there's no right or wrong in a lot of cases. So that's part of what makes music so cool. So anyway, let's take some ideas, lose some, you know, whatever. And, uh, and let me know what you think of this piece. All right, let's get to it. So. If you want, to, oh, if you want to hear me play it, I'm not going to play this all the way through, but if you want to hear me play it, there's vids on YouTube, but also check out my first album, Vivace, that has all Opus 25 that I recorded on it, and it's on my website and on Spotify and YouTube, or yeah, it's on YouTube too, I think. Um, Apple Music, all those good things there. All right, so um, study number 12. Um, oh yeah, I'm using the Corteau edition in case anyone, a lot of people ask. Uh, link in the description below. It's not like you have to use Cortez, it's just the one I have. So there it goes. So this piece is basically arpeggios up and down the whole time. If you don't be careful, it'll sound dull, boring, and repetitive. You don't want that. So you want to make it sound like music. So this, like in all pieces, stay loose and don't be in pain. If you ever are in pain and or are tight, stop, figure out how not to be, and uh, don't power through it because you don't want permanent hurting or permanent damage or anything like that. Um, okay, so the, the main melodies generally in the thumb of the right hand at the bottom. And then it comes. This is actually a good way to practice it, by the way. Not necessarily just like that, but like clumping it together. Check out, um, like slow, this, is, this, this is just one of the methods of slow practicing. Check out my vid or vids on slow practicing because that's really important and applies to this piece and all pieces pretty much that you'll ever play. Um, slow practicing means playing it slowly and or doing long short. Short long. Um, staccato. Harsh. Or other things, right? Um, and it, it can be very boring, but it can be very effective um, in helping with technique stuff, especially. Um, so anyway, what you don't want, you don't want it to sound like a whole bunch of arpeggios. It's just that. It still needs to have a melodic shape. Now the melody stretches a long time. A shape and then you have the counter thing and it comes right um, also the pinky so it does you have it on the top bottom and top the bottom is going to affect the impression of the melodic line more than the top will I think they both can but I think the thumb is more important deep Play deep into the keys. We've talked about this before where pretend like you're playing down all the way to the four. The key goes to the four, but the key just happens to stop you. You're playing deep and rich into the key. You're not playing shallow and harsh. Playing deep is a is not just about 
loudness. You can play soft and deep. Um, so I take that back. Playing deep is not about the loudness. It's about the tone and how you play it. You can play soft and deep. Um, you can play soft. Or you can play. You can play deep and loud. It's very different than. Even though the decibel is the same, they sound differently. Okay, so don't play harsh. Play deep. So, bottom and top, all notes play deep. But um, bring, especially the melodic line in the thumb, deep. Shape it too. Shape it across all those measures. about in previous episodes where um, if you're playing a loud piece you don't want to just max out and then just be flatlining at the top where it's maxed out and the piano can't play anymore one way to make it seem like you're growing for example would be to crescendo and then drop down and crescendo and then drop down and crescendo that gives the impression because the contrast between um, different parts can affect what people perceive as uh, how loud something is as well as the actual decibel and probably other things too um, so where was I now? So let's see, I am on, I'll just do the part after measure nine. Taking some breaks and placing notes and retardando and things like that are allowed in this piece. Use them, you know, appropriately. Don't overdo it, but it, it's possible. And encouraged. Tops. Bottom. So here I'm going. It's kind of, kind of that sound, so the thumb and the top. Coming down. Don't be afraid to use soft pedal as well. Here I got to come way down. Because it, it gives you a ten chance to kind of uh, save room for later.
that's it basically. And 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 then the, the end really deep and rich. Play deep and rich into the into the key. So. so like that something like that so yeah so this is the end of not only this piece but of the entire opus 25 set of etudes so again as i've said before how you play this movement might be different if you're playing just this one just this etude or if you're playing the entire set and this is the end of a 30 minute long piece of music but um those are some ideas keep it clean slow practicing long short short long things like that can be very helpful you want to keep it fairly even you don't want you don't want it to be little, little, run away from you, but at the same time, don't be afraid to place certain important beginnings of like measures and stuff and or sections and to to push ahead or uh, or um, take time, you know, uh, retardando, things like that. When you do that stuff, though, have it controlled. One difference between, you know, if, if it's controlled and intentional, you can get away with a lot. Um, in terms of like interpreting, interpreting, I'm just making up words all over the place. In terms of like interpreting stuff, you can get away with a lot if it's controlled and intentional. If it doesn't sound controlled, it sounds like it was a mistake and it was just not intentional and it sounds bad. But if you're like, if you want to push ahead or, or, or pull back or something, you can just keep the notes even with, within that pushing forward or pulling back. Things like that. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know on this piece, on other pieces, on the rest of the etudes, whatever. Um, this is a big project. I recorded all 12 of them today, so I'm tired. My throat's done. So I'm going to go get some coffee. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff on all the social media stuff for the algorithms. And I appreciate your watching. Um, I'll see you in another uh, video online. Bye-bye.